Victor Santa Lucia, another rare Victor de Alva, Nigal Gore du Leon. This is one of the most used ships in the game, really, seen in a crap ton of fleets. Jordan Dumas. This one is. This one's interesting. This guy has some uses, actually, especially on like switchblades, um, like the Saber. This guy is fun on the Saber. He's got reroll and crew of any nationality, so. There's some real interesting builds with this dude. Uh, probably not a bad crew for the Celtic Fury, too, for some weird or potentially crazy setups on that thing. But anyway, not going to go down that rabbit hole right now. USS Constitution, Ocean's Ed version, three of the Georgetown. Looks like at least four, actually. Let's see in the room. Let's keep piling through this. Yeah, Georgetown. Captain Montana Maze, rare from... Ocean's Edge, a couple of those. Let's just organize that pile a little bit. Got some crew for twofers, Master Chief Petty Officer Charles Richard. Lost, one of the most notable UTs in the game. It's not always for good reasons, but it just can be kind of destabilizing and, and uh, arguably game breaking at times. So, anyway, on your opinion, that one. I don't think this is a new one for me, but it might be. I think there's at least one rare junk from Caribbean that I'm randomly missing. So I, I just got to check my list to see if that's the one or not. So Black Pearl, very nice. Always nice to have more of those. those are, these are also pretty special. So obviously, HMS Interceptor, similar. A couple of those, really nice. Swift, the Hound is awesome. This is one of the most, this is just one of the best English gold runners. So, and I'm, English are my favorite faction, so... You know, it's going to be one of my favorites to use. Uh, Paradox is really good, actually. Princess, not bad. Kind of like a poor man's version of the Longshank. So, let's keep rolling through it. Princess, HMS Victor is quite good. Let's flip that pile over. I see a bunch of Flying Dutchman here, so it's fun. Let's see what else we got. Macus with Elizabeth's Piece of Eight. I think I already had that one. There's a chance this is new. I don't feel like I recognize this crew chip all that much. This could be new for me. This piece of A is really... This is crazy. The pirates are using this in Vassal Campaign 4. And it's like a... It's just like a Lord Micron, basically, for them. <laughs> you may give an action to any pirate ship instead of giving the ship an action. So, pretty crazy. Piratic Codex, another rare. Emerald James Norrington. Common, but a very good crew. Kevin Barbosa, Elizabeth Swan. A lot of familiar people here, obviously. Captain Jack Sparrow, best crew in the whole game, and generally the the engine behind Universal Pirate Shipping, the uh, fleet strategy pioneered by Darren, as far as I know, uh, Darren of Ministry of Trading, that wins a crap ton of uh, competitive games, and uh, is pretty much the best way to win standard competitive 40-point games. So lots more details on Pirates of Ben, if you don't know about it yet. Captain Davy Jones... Kind of tough to use, but um, I'd like to experiment with him more someday if I have time. Calypso. Oh, God, I got four of her. Oh, this is chaos. I don't know. This Jeez. I might have to let her get used by new players because uh, that could really unleash some fun games. I want to use her more, too. It's just so much, so, so much potential. Definitely, just, you, you just, you got to get one of these. If you, if you don't have Calypso, or even just a proxy, whatever you got to do, um, it's too fun and it's too unique not to try out and like try to develop fleet strategies around like so many possibilities like home island raiding. Um, uh, one thing that's fun to do with is like exploring wild islands with like really slow ships because when they pop out of the whirlpool that's L away from a wild island, it doesn't really matter what their base move is. So you can you can scrimp on helmsmen and just do explorers instead, even if you have S base move. Um, when you come out of the whirlpool, your stern is going to push you away, so you're pretty much always going to be with an S of a wild island, if you if you do it right, and there's not like terrain in the way, so um, it's kind of a fun little idea that I want to experiment more with. But clips, so just can't say good enough things about how unique this is. One of the most unique, interesting, engaging, fun, and crazy game pieces ever released. So just out of control, just so fun. Uh, Lord Cutler, Be Lord Cutler Beckett, linked to all English ships, um, and uh, AA ability, so 
Very good, usable proof English. And now we get into some Flying Dutchman, which is really fun. Some of these might be prizes sometime or even giveaways, so very cool. I always like having more of these, so it's the generic version, but um, but really cool for new players to be able to see something like this. So this, I think this is the type of thing that can really help with like buy-in, because it's instant name recognition, uh, coolness factor, all that sort of thing. So I like to have as many of those as possible for future games. Um, let's see. So this is uh, another example. This stack is another example of why Rise of the Fiends might be actually a tiny bit underrated at this point, or maybe it's not by the community, but like I'll admit that I underrated it for some years. Um, now that I think I've like fangirled or geeked out enough on the first like five or whatever sets, um, as you become more of a veteran of playing, you kind of and like looking at the sets and memorizing game pieces, you start to realize Rise of the Fiends is not too bad, especially just for gameplay alone. Maybe the cards are arguably a little ugly, and like, yeah, there's a bunch of junk in the set, and like, scorpions are pretty much atrocious um, for gameplay, looks, everything. They're they're horrible. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just gonna be honest. That's my take on them for the most part. Uh, but but overall, the like solid like bulk of the set is like playable like flotillas are really good and these are all so i'll just i'll just go through it like this is, this is a really good ship t pin uh this is very playable eternal uh not bad at all rising sun this has the kevin jack sparrow ability so this is like a weird way of like doing ups like um when your opponent doesn't expect it and they, they might not remember that this ship has this disability and all of a sudden you're like pulling ups on them and they're like oh shit i thought only kevin jack sparrow had that ability so Belladonna has Home Island Horde, uh, which is good. This is a really good one to use with Hammersmith from Rise of the, uh, from uh, Fire and Steel. Save a cargo space on Captain Helmsman. Just throw like an Oarsman on, then you still have three spaces to take three coins from an opponent Home Island. Needle, not too good, but Fog Hoppers are fun. Grim Reaper is actually one of the best curse ships in the whole game. Crushed Skull is a is a playable gunship for the curse specifically. Um, nothing compared to the Grim Reaper, but not a bad ship either. So like in this whole stack, for example, only the ne I would only call the needle bad. I wouldn't call any of the other ships bad. Belladonna and Crushed Skull are kind of hard to use, but they're not like horrible ships. So compared to like Fire and Steel, that stack is like is pretty pretty great. So okay, I think I've probably probably hyped up Rise of the Fiends maybe a little more than it deserves, <laughs> but whatever. Uh, let's see. Have enough ships for a decent stack here. All right, just grab that. The card sleeves are really nice, but they make it a little slippery to try to keep track of the cards. All right, now we're getting into the golden age. So for as much as good stuff I said about uh, Rise of the Fiends, Revolution is probably ten times better. So Executioner, Bloody Jewel. Oh my God, Bloody Jewel is classic. One of the best gold runners. Oh, this is insane. If you just saw the preview. Look at this. Look at this. Let's just put that there. Make it all rares. Look at that. HMS Swallow. So, five. I don't know if these were five bucks each or I have no idea. It could have been more or less, but maybe they, they, they may have been three. So, Matt L had a really good deal. So, I was like, you know what? I love the English. I love HMS Swallow. New players are going to love her too. HMS Dreadnought. Always nice to have more of her as well. So, this is just. This is gorgeous. So six rare English five masters from the glory days of the game. This is like a this is gorgeous for a English player like me. Uh, I mean, I I certainly play all the factions, like maybe not equally, but almost equally. Like I actually, I often don't use the English, so it's actually it's kind of just random at this point. It's just like pick a faction, kind of. So HMS Oxford is actually really good. Maybe uh, maybe a better ship than the Swallow. I don't know. Maybe that's the question of the day. Oh, yeah, I have not been thinking about that for this compilation vid. That, I don't know. Anybody that's still watching, thank you. Uh, <laughs> obviously, I'm just rambling. Uh, but this is a really nice lot. So this, of all the lots, this is the one to ramble on because this is probably the best box, maybe, arguably. Oh, the, oh that's a good question. So what, what's your favorite box from this lot out of the 12? 
what's your favorite in terms of like the video or what I've done with like how I unbox it or whatever, or what I talk about from each lot. Um, follow up would also be which box would you want? If you could get any of these 12 boxes for free, which one, um, or even not for free, even if you could buy it, um, all things considered equal, like what would you, which box would you want? Like which number, what like type? So, um, anyway, so Oxford syrup is, so two questions of the day. Lots of these, not a lot of syrup is more of each. Put those in order real quick. Algiers, HMS Greyhound, rare. Hardwick is a rare. Lots more coming, as always. Let's see here. Robinson. Solid English crew with Rapt. Ramsgate. A couple of those. Calvadora. Almanarca, one of the best Spanish goalers in the game. You know, one of the best overall. Fortaleza Dorada. Five. Very nice. Love forts. Love them. Can't get enough forts. Part of the reason, so, I'll just say right after that, part of the reason I'm hoarding forts is because I have, like, Pretty, pretty grand plans with them for the extremely long term uh, with future campaign games that may get played uh, decades from now. So hopefully that'll happen. Hopefully it won't die in the meantime or something, but we'll see. Uh, Corjo, lots of those. Cannot pronounce French ship names. Sorry, that's all right. Just used the bell against uh, Luke in a game this past weekend. One of my favorite friendships, actually, without a doubt. Favori, a peak, one of the best gold runners ever. Madame Lafontaine, La Laplante. Getting the American stuff, a couple of United States, Freedom, Louisiana, Jarvis. A bunch of the Jarvis. Jarvis is a really good one. Quite a good ship, actually. Fun to see some of my ships from my original collection, too. Jarvis and Boston were probably, well, they may have been my first two schooners ever, I think. They were definitely part of my original 49 ship collection back in the day. Rattlesnake is amazing. For the Americans. Gotta make more room for the stacks, so I'm excited. Getting to some South China soon. Don't expect too much from that. But <laughs> South China's just bank breaking it's just i don't know I'm trying to collect south china at this point it's just, you're gonna be you're gonna be paying a lot of money like no matter what i think so it's kind of a it's kind of a tough one like just be better off just trying to make the ships yourself at some point <laughs> or within a year or two then i'll be accused so philadelphia love this ship so good really good ship with like my points in play house rule um Watson Peacock, DNT. The Barbico's version is way better. He's a canceler, so I'd probably let, probably proxy this in for him. Because, um, yeah, this ability is trash. This is a one point ability. This is like a half point ability. Like, this never. This doesn't. This just doesn't happen. You never do this in games. You don't trade with an S randomly. You don't even have the opportunity for it in, like, probably. 80 90 percent of games, let alone actually do it, let alone actually have this ability on board on a crew that takes up space on a gold runner that needs that space for their actual coins. So, just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, this is like a half point ability if there could ever be one. This would this would be a candidate for that. So, and then the, the Barbary Coast version is Canceler for five points, so just a night and day difference. Okay, this is one of the most underrated crews. So everybody talks about the one point eternal Ralph David, which is which makes sense. That's really good. We saw him earlier. But his first version gives plus two gold for three points, which is great. Uh, the Americans don't have the best gold running fleet. And I, I, I think this version of Ralph David should, David should probably see more usage. Um, so plus two gold, one of the best abilities in the game. And the Americans can use it. Uh, he'd be good on the frontier with eight cargo because uh, she can afford to have some more crew than an average gold runner because she's so capacious and can still fit a lot of coins after that. And of course, they have the Cargo Master, too, which would allow him to um, fill the extra cargo space. Net zero for uh, for some of the other gold runners they have. So, tons of land. Ooh, yay, UTs, Neptunes, Trident, Explosives. Two of the most interesting and exciting UTs in the whole game, actually. So, 
these are crazy. I've had a lot of shenanigans with Neptune's trident this year here in uh, 2021. Check the uh, battle reports on Pirates of Ben for some uh, examples. You can actually search any kind of terms at Pirates of Ben. So if you search Neptune's trident on Pirates of Ben, you'll see uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's been pretty wild. Between CG4 and then I think one of the games kept Randy maybe. I don't even know. Uh, at least one of the summer games and stuff like that. Definitely saw some Trident plays that have been pretty fun. Actually, I think multiple in CG4. Yeah, not necessarily. I think I guess the first one was probably 2020. But anyway, I won't spoil it. So, Vassal King of War is just out of control. So, Feathered Hat, Hidden Cove. This is actually one of my most, most wanted way back in the day before I like didn't want to do events because I, cause I wanted to be able to play more competitive fleets even in solo play. So I was looking for Hidden Cove for a while. I think I traded for it back in 2013, something like that. This is a, this is a really good ship, actually. So this one is stacked. Uh, cargo, speed, cannons, ability, plus plus, definitely. New Orleans, kind of like a, I don't know, kind of like a upgraded version of Philadelphia. Maybe not upgraded, but more capable of doing things on our own than the Philadelphia. Philadelphia usually needs a little more support. New Orleans has really good cannons by comparison. So this is one of my favorite French ships in the whole game. So I know the Duleon version from Ocean's Edge that we saw earlier is far better pretty much as an overall ship. But this one is good. This is like one of the more underrated support gun ships. It's not like wicked good or anything, but, but solid cargo, um, two well cannons, and then you can double them, double the range. So you can be really accurate at long range, which is fine and a fair price for a support gun ship like that. But then you can also hit on sixes at 2L range. So so pretty pretty nice ship. USS Emerald, I love this one too. I've already talked about my love for that ship, I think. Uh, HMI, oh man. So yeah, so the South China Seas LEs are nice because they're cheaper than the LEs from uh, Davy Jones Curse and Mysterious Islands. And stuff like that, and Ocean's Edge, but they're but they also happen to be better. I think on average, I'm pretty sure the average quality of a South China Seas LE ship for gameplay is better, if not far better, on average than any of those other three sets I mentioned. Just thinking about it right now, yeah, I would I would say I'm not going to do a full analysis, maybe someday, but but yeah, so they're cheaper than those other ones because they're more common and they're better. So the South China Seas LEs, I would highly recommend. Um, Rai is very playable. Good with flotillas. Really good uh, English support ship. You could just use your empty as a gold runner too. Two cargo SSS speed. Not amazing for nine points, but for the English, it's not terrible for an uh, empty gold runner. Patagonia, of course, very versatile. Usually used for Lord Micron, Robinson, Bratley combo rather than as a gold runner, but six points for SS speed with three cargo with a homeson. Not too bad for the English either. Sea Snake is not great, but uh, Beast Belly is, is pretty damn good, actually. So, really annoying, pesky ability uh, that can really pay dividends over the long haul. So, or if you, get to, like, if you get to use it multiple times, I mean, so, in the same game. Alright, getting into the Corsairs. Let's flip through these. All right, making progress, slowly but surely. Yeah, this is going to be over an hour video. <laughs> Uh, but this this box definitely deserves it to see the least. Algiers, a couple of those. Marat Race. So Jack Hawkins. Pretty darn good crew. And those are three of the better name crew for the Corsairs, actually. So that's nice. Alexandria. Very nice. One of the most beautiful ships in the game. It's like an almost all white four masted galley. So really cool. I was so hyped to get my first copy of this back in the day. It's so good. Um, or for gameplay, it's not like amazing, but just, this is. English players need this because it's, it's their only four masted galley. It's really beautiful. It's kind of a, it's kind of a jewel or a gem, if you will, in an English player's collection, in my opinion. So, uh, Granville is actually really pretty darn good three masted gunship. Westminster, not as good, but somewhat playable. Antelope, a fair, fair uh, little ship. So I've got some of those. St. Denis or Denise uh, for the French. That's their four masked galley that they got. St. Joan. I think we saw a copy of her in an earlier lot in this video. Uh, 
put the baby dolls cursed up there and just finish the the Barbary stuff. Barbary Coast. So Preble and Wayne Nolan. Perfect. So they're really good to use in tandem with each other. Reroll the AA ability. And uh two of the better or more usable American name crew in general, especially Nolan, of course. So very nice. Yeah, the Americans they showed up to play in uh, Barbary Coast. They got a really strong showing in that set. So getting into Davy Jones Curse. We got Kalim, Rare Squid, Executioner, one of the best curse ships in the game, Sea Monkey, one of the better curse gold runners, or or just hybrids, just one of the better curse ships in general. Hangman's Joke, I love this one. Lois Justice, not a terrible gold runner for the cursed specifically. Let's flip through this crew. Let's put that one at the back. So it gets into the pirates, white crew, tabby. Ooh, I didn't realize I, had, I was going to have two of them. Nice. Oh, this, this is bunk. This is bunk. So Davy Jones. So we already saw the Ocean's Edge version. And uh, now I got... This is... I don't have any duplicates of him. So this is of this version. So so my only my only copy, my original copy is in New York. So this is cool to have two copies, unpunched copies of Rare Davy Jones from GJC here in Washington. So... Link to the Flying Dutchman. So, it's got the copier ability and limit. Really, really pretty special crew as well. I have kind of a more of a soft spot for the OE version. Maybe because I like the artwork better. And all powerful is extremely good. But yeah, copying is, is insane. And now Phantasma, another rare. And then Harbinger, 034. The Pirate Spy Mask from. DJC. Let's see what else we got. Finishing up the second row of stuff. <laughs> Dragon's Breath, Jamaica. This is a really good crew for two-word Derek the Red with G Petty Officer, Charles Richard, Gargantuan. That was my first ever English Five Master. It's back from 2006, so kind of nostalgic seeing her. Caradoc. Caradoc's not a terrible ship. Not great, but uh, let's see where this goes here. See where this lot takes me. This is my favorite ship in the whole game. HMS Lord Algernon, ESO 3. One of the two original English five masters from the Spanish main along with HMS Titan. So, I've talked about this one at length uh, in various ways. It's so nice to use her as a true flagship in uh, Command the Oceans in 2017. Uh, in that English fleet, that was like, this, uh, cause I was, I never wanted to use, I was always hesitant to use my physical copy of the Algernon games to like keep it really nice. Normally I'm not like that with ships, even with my 10 masters, I usually, I just go full steam ahead and just use them and take the mass out, stuff like that. But this is, I don't know, it was just extra special, but it was really worth it to pull that one out for Command the Oceans and have it be the English flagship for quite a while in that game. So really neat. Uh, ship overall, or it's like, it's not, it's a joke compared to the Titan, just, just to be honest about it in terms of, it's not like a competitive ship, but it's, one. it's my favorite, so, um, it's not necessarily my favorite to use, I'll, I'll admit that, but I've already talked about it a lot, so, Lester, Dover, Revenge, promo PP376, the Revenge, so that's one, that's kind of a weird one, it's, it's not that expensive to get this one, like, it's a promo, it's a, it's not part of like the main set, but um, but it's uh, it's not too hard to get. It's not too expensive. Amicio, always use more cancelers, and then of course El Corazado. Kind of like the best one v one gunship in the game, along with the Constitution from Revolution and the Endeavor from Caribbean. So certainly discuss that at, at length. In battle reports galore at Pirates of Ben and other places. Durante, nice to see another one of her as well. So, you can see some of the absolute classics of the game here, which is great. Can't really get enough of those. Durante, again, for his own. Got Plague UT, another classic. Not always fun to encounter, but certainly a, a wild UT to throw in there for chaos. 
La Victoire. This is one of my favorite. This is actually one of my favorite ships, maybe in the whole game. Um, love ships with more cargo than masts. I don't really mind the base move. That's fine. For a five master, that's pretty much average. And then the cannons are quite good. French crew. That's kind of cool for versatility. Um, I don't know. I think it's just like the combination of stats on this. I just love the overall package you get. So they have better five masters, but I just I really love that one. Eagle, I love as well. Arabella is not great, but Amity and Treasure, pretty solid three masters. Let's see. Let's see what else we get. Adventure, Gilded Monkey, Times Four, Duke, a couple Charles, Bonnie Liz, one of the best gold runners. Raven, really good ship overall. Rover, rare little master. Let's finish this out. Mermaid, now I got a crew, so I'm gonna flip them if I can see them. I got the rover and the mermaid. And we got Bloody Jake, holy crap. But the key is on this side, Maurice Aristide. He's been in some UPS fleets. Uh, French crew that gives plus two to gold. So, and then the Requin, and then Jonah. These are some really good crew cards between the front and backs. Pretty solid. Hag of Tortuga, very nice. Phantasma, one of the lesser known versions of Phantasma, or lesser used. So, pretty expensive for a home island raider, but anyway. It's got a like, crew eternal type thing going on. Or if he's uh, eliminated, he gets placed on your home island, so. Pretty unique in that fashion. Uh, Jack Hawkins, really good version of him. Crimson Angel, six point EA. Uh, HMS Goliath, HMS London, HMS Sultan. I would say the English. You could argue the English showing in uh, Crimson Coast is a little bit underwhelming. They did get really good two masters, like specifically. I mean, the London is. Wicked good, but you'll see the two masters. So like Sultan, like you saw those ships, like uh, like Viceroy. What is this one? Sultan, Viceroy, Sultan, Goliath. They're all kind of like a little bit meh or average. For Crimson Coast, they're a little bit underwhelming. And two masters, like Cumberland. Yeah, the cards are all falling. That's good. They're all falling like dominoes. It's probably gonna keep making noise if I don't put it back up. So uh, Cumberland is one of the best English gold runners. Gibraltar is a really fun ship. This one's pretty stacked. Uh, more cargo than masts. Super fast. Very good cannons. Home island rating. So, a dangerous little pest. Uh, at worst. Alexander. Um, comparable to the Cumberland. And also one of the better English gold runners. And then HMS Lady Provost. One of the best English gold runners. So, the English got four really good two masters in this set. Including three of their best gold runners. Period. So, specifically with two masters, they certainly did well in Crimson Coast. And they got Bratley for crew. Argonauta, Santa Ana. Uh, let's see. Whoa. This is a pretty good Santa Ana, too. Kind of overshadowed by the South China Seas version, which is pretty deadly, but this is a good, this is a good uh, treasure galleon for the, for the Spanish. So, I'm seeing like a third copy. Here. Yeah, Santa uh, 4. Very nice. San Francisco. And then we got some other ones. Let me flip these before I get into the crew. We got the Doctor. This is not a great crew card, to be honest. But And then we got Anita Amor. Spanish. Zero Limit Ransom plus 5. Ooh. Ah, oh, yes. One of my favorites of all time. La Ville de Paris. And this one is uh, probably at least somewhat historically based on the ship that was at the Battle of the Saints in 1782. And pretty sure I got that right, hopefully. Uh -huh. And probably other battles too. I just can't remember exactly. So, so I like this one. This one's kind of like a slightly better version of the HMS Lord Algernon. So they, they both fit the like stereotype of or like the mold of like the perfect way to represent a three deck ship of the line um, from the age of sail. So slow speed, 
cannons are pretty much as good as they can be. Like you, you could you could split hairs over which ones you want to be all, which ones you want to be long range, or if you want all of them to be long range. But um, slow speed, solid cargo, and then ignores the first hit. So kind of like a lumbering, tanky beast mode gunship. So artwork's a little strange. I wish it was more historically reasonable with like two cannons and one like gunport area pretty pretty strange but i think it would, it would definitely look better if you just had two regular gun decks and didn't have the double gun action but anyway so yeah they don't they don't reference any historical stuff in the flavor twice but but it's, i'm thinking that that almost has to be where they got the name from so so kind of like to think of this ship as as the three decker from back in the day way back when uh, let's see, Possession, this was, uh, I don't know if it, it may have been my first friendship, so, one of the classics from my early collection, pretty cool, it's pretty interesting, if not, maybe not all that good, usually, <laughs> all right. ooh, I love this one, this is, I think I called this ship the most underrated in the, in the game, like a year or two ago, so, I don't know if I still stand by that, but probably, this thing is crazy, so uh, nobody talks about it. It's like it's like a 